Hey traders from around the world, that's Market Close. I'm coming at you with your Wednesday real life stock review. Today was actually Will Power Wednesday. Will Power Wednesday. So what that is, is that's when I don't take many trades at all. Just sit around, watch the charts, and don't do anything. I feel like I missed out on some good trades today, but I always miss out on good trades every single day. Can't stress about it, can't worry about it, it's a fact of trading, it will absolutely unequivocally indeed happen. So the pattern that we tracked down really last week has been playing out exceptionally well, right? We talked about this pattern, bear candle, big gap down, retest gap, bear candle, big bear candle, retest gap, bearish candle, bullish candle coming in, bullish candle coming in, huge bullish move, huge bullish move, almost like a Christmas song. Little bit of bearish candle, a little bit of bearish candle, continuation selling, continuation selling. And then today, I did fully expect a bullish day, right? Bullish day, bullish day. So that means is tomorrow gonna be bearish? Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe if we got down, it actually would be kind of bearish out there. And again, I expect a little bit of selling. And then more often than not, just look to go long um, sometime on Friday, right? Towards the end of the day and then expect a little bit of a bounce. We will see, it happened once before, we'll find out if it happens again, but that's just kind of my overall viewpoints on the SPY right now. Trend is still bullish. Let's go look at some individual stocks. Uh, this is a swing trade that I'm in on LK. A lot of people like trading and looking at LK and I got triggered in by the skin of my teeth. The, uh, yes, not Monday at 1947. So the intro is 1946. So that kind of just flashed up there. Watching this one super close though, because this is an unfilled gap, nice little bearish trend, new black crow candle inside candle with similar lows. So if LK takes out this low, I'm gonna flip, uh, probably exit the swing trade and go bearish on um, either day trade or swing trade, just kind of get that R back. So that's LK. Again, the market had a strong bull move today for the most part, right? Qs were up an entire percent at close. And then I'm in this stupid swing trade. Um, Max R, the second time I'm trying it bullish and it is not working, at least not yet, which is really weird because I'm kind of just trying to figure out when it's going to work. With this amount of bullish volume, I think it's more of a win than an if. So if this particular trade doesn't work, I probably will sell a $5 January put. And if I get put some shares at five, then cool. Um, my cost basis will be 475 at that point and then I'll just try to ride out the storm. But Max R, big, nice bullish day in the market. Today, right, with the whole market gapping up, this was a day to focus on gap downs. Johnson & Johnson, number one favorite gap down today, and it was clearing pivots, right? You were clearing the low of this candle, the low of this candle, the low of this candle, uh, the low of this candle, so you had four or five candles, perfect retest gap. I mean, speaking about retest, check out this retest gap. This is what dreams are made out of right here. Oh, look at that. Beautiful move, really good breakdown. There's your retest, there's your high wave candle, entry here, stop somewhere way the heck up there, and short city. If you didn't trade that, then you got embarrassed around here somewhere after it broke down and retested again. So. Anyway, Johnson Johnson, a really nice bearish gap down to there. There's a lot of nice moves out there. Obviously, Roku, a big strong one for today. A lot of real life traders made some good money on Roku. I still think it could be in a way for, although it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. It makes sense for it to go up as high as it did today. I'm totally fine with it. I don't have any position on Roku right now at all, but I did really, really like this gap. This was an incredibly strong gap. And I talked about Roku just yesterday in the afternoon swing trading room, of course, to look for a break in one direction or another. There is your pennant pattern. And I said a break down would obviously make the most sense, but if it breaks up, right? I mean, let's play it bullish as well. So we'll find out what Roku does and exactly how much it retests, but right now things are looking good on Roku. Here's F-R-A-N, Francesca's. And looking at this one because it does seem like it's building some pressure. Nice retest gap, higher lows, lower highs, three day pennant pattern. So I'm gonna keep a real close eye on this one just in case we get a pop out bullish or pop out bearish, really tomorrow or the next day. I mean, that's a really nice looking pennant pattern. 
It did have a reverse split, which is never uh, great news, but you know, it kind of propped up the stock a little bit. Uh, we'll see. You know, I mean, it could be just a quick in and out money making swing trade, which I like those. Right, this is the weekly charts. You can see the 50 EMA on the weekly has been a nice resistance before, and it very well could be a resistance again. Uh, so I'll keep it on Francesca's. It might be something worthwhile. Here's Schwab, SCHW. Obviously, with the lowering of commissions, all brokers across the board getting shammered, and Schwab was one of them. Had a beautiful bearish gap and go on August 1st. A lot of people getting trapped and Schwab trading down into a support. Earnings is around the corner and I don't know exactly what to expect on Schwab with earnings, but here's the weekly chart. We're below all the long-term moving averages, which is a little, it shows some weakness, honestly. If I go to the monthly chart, you have a long way to go on the monthly chart, but there is some very interesting weakness out here on Schwab. So my overall thought process is fade the uh, fade it. Um, if it pulls back into here, I mean, unfortunately, slash for, you know, for, unfortunately for them, fortunately for us, them lowering commissions, they're going to lose a lot of money. And short term, I think everyone knows that. So I just don't see how Schwab doesn't eventually pull down to 3086. Could take its sweet time doing so, but I think at this point, for most of the brokers, let's hit them where it hurts, folks. As traders, this is our chance to get 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 back the man. Get it back, get some of the money back that we spent in commissions all these years. So anyway, morning star reversal. We'll see if it bounces and maybe trades higher, but again, I'd probably be looking to short those pullbacks. Square, SQ. So Square did eh, relatively exactly what I said it would do about a week ago. This was a gorgeous retest gap right there on Square, and it retested, it's so weird. So weird how that happens. Nice little retest gap, got a really good gap yesterday. Nice little gap up today. And Square, for the most part, I mean, I still think it's a matter of time before this gap up here fills. That's just really my thought. Here's the weekly chart and the 100 symbol is at 63.66, so that'll provide obviously some resistance. But overall, I do like Square long-term. I'm a fan, uh, actually has some really nice positions on Square and we, we love the company long-term. So I think right now it's just a distribution it's going to trade sideways for a while. It's going to hang out. It's going to get pretty boring. No one's going to talk about Square, and then it'll slowly start picking up. Speaking of boring, Netflix won't be boring for long because earnings are around the corner. Is it pronounced grammatically earnings is around the corner or earnings are around the corner? Hmm. Any grammar teachers can let me know, maybe. Uh, Netflix, we will see. I mean, this is the strategy if you want to pause your screen and kind of read through it. This is what a lot of traders are considering on Netflix. This is a bull call debit spread. This would just be a long put directionally, and this would be a put sale down here, all the way down at 180 for December. Um, and that would, overall, obviously, this would be a net debit, but I think Netflix is more towards the low side. My theory, Netflix gaps down and then fades higher. That's what I think is gonna happen on earnings on Netflix. The weekly chart, Netflix has gotten straight up pounded. And the 200 simple is at 222.94. This is on the weekly chart. It's been a very long time since Netflix has hit that. So I would love to buy Netflix off that price. And it is a possibility that we could get down there before too long. But if we gap up on earnings, there will be a lot of shorts that are trapped on Netflix. So if we gap up, I would love to trade it bullish for not only a day trade, but also, you know, kind of like a swing trade, maybe uh, back up into the long-term moving averages. So anyway, earnings are around the corner, and if Netflix doesn't gap at all, which would be a little bit more on the rare side, if it doesn't gap at all on Netflix, then I don't know. Uh, after that, we'll just keep day trading it, swing trading it, maybe taking advantage of some implied volatility with some option sales, but it is nice and low, and big picture, I'd like to, it to go a little bit lower before I buy some, but I don't have any position Netflix right now. Just waiting it out. But this was a very nice day trade today. You had a one, sorry, not a one black crow. This is a new black crow candle yesterday and we just softly gaps down on Netflix. Check out this five minute chart on Netflix. I mean, again, if you're playing the five minute or the three minute, got a little bit of a sell off, got the retest and then got the quick flush lower. And that was pretty much it on Netflix. Last but not least, here's Ethereum. A lot of people requested some cryptos. And yes, I am long this stuff. And yes, I do like this gap. 
Today is Wednesday, right? So let me take you back to just one little piece uh, I think that's valuable. Even as a part of a real life traders, you get really cool stuff like this from me very frequently. 8.58 p.m., Monday, October 7th, Ethereum looking good again for some pickup down here. So Ethereum, that is when I bought some more um, on ETH. So this night, that was Monday, around 174 and some change, I believe. Uh, 167.95, I had some positions there. Nice little pop, good volume, possible double bottom. We got a long way to go, but I do still like this as a accumulation phase. Buy low, be patient, give it time, own, collect, have, and maybe you'll get a payout eventually. But even if you don't do that, it's still able to be traded on a technical standpoint, especially if you're using the hourly chart. Support resistance, breakout, volume, all that still works quite well. You can see this insanely beautiful double bottom right here. And neckline retested a few times, another neckline, and that's when I said right there that uh, you should be looking at getting into some, picking up some Ethereum at 173, and it went up to 193 today. That's $20, any anyway, way you slice it, dollars, cents, Ethereum's, Bitcoin's, currencies, whatever it is that you use, it's all money and it grows on trees. Ladies and gentlemen, I will see you all on Friday for your trade review. Thanks so much for tuning in, and until next time, love life, live life, and trade, bye.